Well, tonight we're going to look at two JRC radios, kind of top of the top of the heap, kings of the hill, whatever you want to call them. The JRC NRD 630, which a friend of mine, uh, Dan Robinson, actually has graciously loaned me so I could do these reviews and so you could see what's going on with them and see actually see one being used. And then a, a NRD 301A, which is a little older, um, and that's one that I, I use a lot of a lot of the time actually. Both of these have internal speakers. Um, I'd say they're very close when it comes to layout, except you know the 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 keypad and all on the on the six thirty or something that you you're you're not going to find on a six on a three hundred one A. Uh, the 301A was, this one was made in uh, August of 1997. I think they were made between 96 and year 2000. So a four year window there. Whereas the uh, 630, according to Fred Osterman in his book, um, were made, had a production run of 2007-2008. This one's unique because it was actually... Uh, According to Dan, personally, the the people he got it from uh, said that uh, they had actually had to send it back. It was a business, and they had to send it back to JRC to have them recertify it and do some work on it, for whatever reason. Um, I did notice when it came back, it's rebadged as uh, January 2012. So I don't know what the time time frame for that is, but it's it's kind of strange. So what I'm going to do is go through kind of like some of the controls and then basically do some tuning to, and, and give, give you some, some pros and cons of each machine. That's pretty much what I want to do. All right. So the layout's pretty much the same. VU leader, uh, this, the uh, channel, you number of channels. If you go down here and hit channel, that comes up too. I'm going to go back. As you have to go back, it's not the same button there. So it's a little little different interface. Um, you have a dimmer on this up here. Um, the dimmer down here is very similar. Okay. Uh, the tuning you have on both of them, you have megahertz and kilohertz uh, we, uh, tuning wheels. Um, or it can be used also for channels if you're doing channels or groups of channels and things like that for scanning through. Um, the 630 has one extra filter, uh, or actually has a number of filters, has six filters, and they all come standard because this is a DSP machine. In other words, digital signal processing, it processes everything on computer chips, and there aren't any filters that you can actually, mechanical filters you can actually insert in this. So it comes with a 6, 3, 2.7, 1, uh, 0.5, and 0.3 kilohertz. Uh, the 2.7, I believe, is the one that actually, when you took it modes, this has ISB built into it. Um, you just select it that way, and uh, or you can go back to that. Um, so you select it that way, and it listens to either one side or the other um, of, of the uh, signal on the side of the carrier. Um, that's done if you want to filter out noise on one side of the signal or another. Um, you have fax FSK. DSB, which is AM, CW, which is Morse code, and then upper and lower sideband. Um, one thing interesting, same thing down here, except you don't have ISP. That's down there. The rest, same modes. And the 301 has basically 6, 1, and 0.5 that comes standard with it. And they are mechanical filters. This has the boards, vertical boards on the motherboard and the whole thing. This is about three times as heavy as this one, uh, just to let you know that. Um, I have gone into and installed a one and a point three uh, uh, you know, kilohertz filter. So this one has the stock filters too, but uh, it doesn't have a two point seven. You do have the pass pan shift and things like that on both of them, so you can you can slew it one way or the other. Yeah, so there is a little bit of control, but it's 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 not like uh, some of the other ones where some of the, some more modern radios where you actually can. Um, you, you can actually go in and shape the filters themselves, like some of the icons and things like that. Um, you can change the rate on these. And basically, so 
that's kind of the overview. I'm not going to go into a lot more detail on that. You can look and see what we're doing here. One thing I did notice, the 630, um, the sound on the 630, whether it comes from internal or from an external speaker. I've got both of these hooked up through this JRC NVA 319. Um, it has an AB switch on here, so I can go between one and the other uh, to give you the same sound out of each machine. Uh, the sound does not sound as full. Um, give you an example. Okay, this is WTP, which is a local station. So you can hear that. And now I'm going to switch it to the 301. The left lane, left center lane, right lane are all blocks only the far right lane he is getting by. And, that's a, and then so, the that's a roughly the, bridge, you've got road widening operations. The right that's at roughly the same volume level. And that same uh, same sound is through the internal speaker. Same internal speaker, I think. Um, but it's it's just it's just interesting. Also the line level, uh, the line level on this one is a lot lower than this one. That could be based on the specific machine. Uh, the, those are not meant to be like scientifically calibrated to give you an approximation, but it does sound that this one does have a reduction. One other interesting thing that I, no, that I noticed on this is that um, the on the 301, it has an AF filter, which is, uh, uh, let me pull this back. It basically acts as an, almost as an attenuator. So... To 60 if I employ that here, you hear that sound goes down considerably. If I take it off, it makes a lot of difference. On the uh, 630, the RF amp does a similar thing. If you have it engaged, you get the fuller sound. If it's not, it's like a 20 dB attenuator. Now, if I hit the attenuator, so it's somewhere around 10, 10 to 20, it attenuates the signal, in other words, in the RF stage versus the AF stage. And that's a difference in the circuitry, I think, and how it handles, uh, how it has how it hand, has to handle audio, uh, the, the RF and the going through. This one pretty much takes the whole hose and then it works it through DSP to get to filter it out. This one has to reduce it to an AF stage and then goes through mechanical filters. That's the best I can come up with. Some of you electrical engineers and radio guys who know more than I do can correct me on that. I'd be love to hear what the, you might have to say about that. Everything else on these is pretty much from an interface is about the same. Uh, the performance is about the same. Conditions are really rotten tonight, so we'll try a few stations. The one thing you'll notice is the tuning is much more clunky. It's much more traditional JRC marine on these versus this. This, you can actually punch the thing directly, the frequency directly in, and that makes it so much nicer. So, um, one other thing, I guess, you, this one has the as a remote capability uh, that you can actually, it can remote. This one does not have that. So, um, one thing to keep in mind with the ISB as well, on the reason it came out, I think, with 301 or 302A, which is the model kind of in between this, came out about the same time as this, is that it does have the ability as an option to have ISB, whereas this one does not have that, whereas this comes standard with ISB. So, that became a feature that they just included, I guess, when they're building a chip, they can put it always a lot more cost effective to do it that way. You can't upgrade it as much. This one only has four boards in it. It has three, <laughs> one underneath, two on top, and then the board that's behind here. Um, and that's all you get there besides the power supply. That's that's the whole guts of the machine. So anyway, let's let's do some digging with some stations. So I'll go back to the six thirty since it's easy since it since it's easier to actually tune. So if I go to Okay. Okay, that's CHU. And we tune down here. One, two, three. 
I'm gonna have to go down. It's that last thing that's always hard to do. <laughs> the noise floor is more that you get more signal in, audio out, which I think you can get. So, so go back here. Let's see, let's go to uh, 505. The RMI is back on the air on this frequency uh, after the hurricane came through. Although they're weak, these conditions are awful tonight. I just apologize for that in advance. It's a lot more, a lot, lot better bass response, a lot wider response in general, hot treble as well as bass. Uh, this sounds more like a, like a radio. <laughs> this sounds more like a stereo. When I, not really, but I mean, the, the quality, of the sound, if you get a good signal in. Okay, go back here. Uh, Let's see, let's go to 9395. Alright, we're not on my station. 4849. That I am at the door. Oh, brother's well, there. Okay. Okay. We should be looking at the sign. And a lot of the signs are in play right now. <laughs> yes. So that indicates he is—he's either at the door or he's walking towards the door. It's close. Or well, what is close in human time? I don't know. I mean, as you can see, this is a lot of tuning. <laughs> the Lord doesn't have a watch. He doesn't wear a Rolex. It's not a quick machine. Okay, this is the 630 we're hearing now. How many years? How many decades we have? That's the 301. The remaining signs that I think have not appeared Could happen in, a, in one year. All they have? That's at the same audio level from volume standpoint. So uh, you can see there's a, there's a, there's a difference there. Um, I think you can probably, I mean, I've been able, in good conditions, I've been able to bring this one down and get our, get, uh, my, my, uh, in honor of Nick Bordas, uh, the, uh, the non-directional beacon down on 330, uh, which is out of McClellan, Texas. I can get it on both of them. Um, it's hard to say because it's basically a CW marker. So that one's still, pro they both perform about equally on that, although I yeah, my ears are biased, I guess, toward this because I can hear better. <laughs> Maybe this one is just out of my hearing range with old man ears. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so I hope this has helped you kind of see some of the uh, some of the differences, some of the uh, similarities, um, pros and cons. They're just very different machines. And uh, you know, they're both really good machines. And they're both not that common to find out anywhere. So I appreciate Dan Robinson um, loaning me his 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 Cadillac up here on top, the <laughs> in our D five uh, six thirty. Um, it it uh, it's been a joy to use. Um, hard to give it up, but that's how you have to do when you're giving it back to him. So um, if there are any questions or anything like that, um, I will include some pictures of the insides of the six thirty. Um, of the boards and how it's constructed um, on in, in when I post this on Facebook both in the, in the groups as well as my personal home page so uh, hopefully that'll give you some ideas about what the insides looks like because I haven't seen that on internet anywhere else so um, anyway with that I'm going to wish you good conditions and we will see you again next time thanks